Hello, Internet, and welcome to Miller's Musings, a show where my name is Simon Miller, and I muse, hence the name Miller's Musings. I talk about everything from mental health to anxiety to life to death, which is very poignant for today's episode. And we keep it to around 10 minutes, and you're free to leave a comment below. You're free to share your own experiences. Uh, and basically, uh, again, some people always say, you shouldn't be saying this stuff, you're not a doctor. I know I'm not a doctor, it's just a series of vlogs because I'm passionate about mental health. And as I found from the reaction that a lot of people give me, they just find it, uh, and I find it too, somewhat therapeutic and somewhat helpful to see someone having this conversation. Again, I have a small platform, I'm not saying it's big, but I like to use that thing as best as I can. Obviously, if you're struggling or hurting or feel like you need some help, you should go and seek proper me medical um, help. I think I don't think that needs to that needs to be said, but I will say it anyway because I don't really want to take these the wrong way. Now, this is without doubt the hardest one I will ever do because for a few days I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and then I realised well it seems not hypocritical, but it seems somewhat off topic or off filter, off kilter I should say, not to address this head on, given that it is something that we will have to go through and it is something that's very hard. Now. Uh, I think the reason I struggle to do these videos much more than I would do my resting videos or my gaming videos or whatever else is because that is wrapped up in a persona somewhat, or at least we're talking about something that really is not a big deal. I love pro wrestling, I love games, but if they went around tomorrow, weren't here tomorrow, they went away, uh, life would continue on uh, as per usual. Now that also happens when people die, <laughs> um, but we'll get to that in a second. My point being here is, is very open and very honest, and I'm not necessarily very good at that doing that on camera, but that's not the reason I want to do it. It's good to challenge yourself. So... You may have noticed that Miller's Musings didn't go up last week, and there was various reasons for that, but one of them was indeed that somebody in my family passed away. Now, I wasn't going to talk about this specifically either, but then I thought, well, no, he was a human being, and he's someone that I loved, and he was someone that was an ever-present and constant throughout my life, so to not name them almost seems more insulting. It's like those Facebook posts you see where someone says, oh, I'm having such a bad day, and someone goes, oh, what's wrong, babe? And they go, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just... I, I, this, I'm not doing this for attention, I think, is what I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying those people are either. I'm just saying you get the joke, right? Um, so yes, my granddad passed away. And it was it was difficult for two reasons. Because one, he was 95. And I think when someone passes away when they're 95, I think you go through a number of emotions. One of which, to me anyway, was I'm not 100% sure how I'm meant to feel. I was obviously devastated. Um, I knew it was coming. I'd had a conversation with my parents 24 hours before where I'd been through this before and I kind of saw all the signs. But there was another small part of me, given the way I live my life and the way I view the world, where you're like, wouldn't it be amazing to live to 95? And, you know, he, he had what I, what I assume was a, a great life. I'm sure I don't know all the ins and outs, but he seemed very happy. Um, I mean, 95 years old is an incredible age to live to. And I think a lot of times when other people pass away, something that we have to deal with personally is what that means for our own mortality. Because as we should, a lot of us go through life uh, not even thinking about that because you'd go crazy. But when that does happen and you're presented with it in such a fashion, you can't help on at least a small level go, okay, you know, this is what life is all about. We, you know, the three things that are constants, you're born um, and you die and you pay taxes. That was always the, that was always the phrase. And one time Metallica threw in there, listen to Metallica, it was good. I liked it, I got that t-shirt. So yeah, on, on the one hand, it's like when he lived to 95, isn't that wonderful? He, I'm sure he had incredible experiences. Um, you know, he had a loving family, he had friends, he had a good life. But then at the same time, maybe even on a selfish level, you're like, well, they're not in my life anymore. I'm used to having them in my life and going through a grieving process where you have to try and just get used to what is now, you know, the, the new normal. Um, it's very much like breaking up, a lot of people say, and I can understand that because you get into a routine of knowing that someone's there or communicating with them, and then one day they're not there. And I guess it's different. The difference with the breakup is you know that they could be there should they want, but death is obviously final. What's more final than death? Hence why when people talk about war, they say the only true people that experience war are those that died. Because that is, you know, what else is there to experience in war if you've done all the conflict and the fighting and then you passed away? And yeah, it, it just got me thinking about. It's just it's just a weird thing to try and process death, I think. And obviously, it, it is much different if somebody dies uh, when they're a lot younger. Like within that 24-hour period, it was also where uh, John Bain, also known as Total Biscuit, passed away. And you know that to me, the kind of uh, the juxtaposition that's not right. But the, the antithesis, of all of that w w was fascinating. That's not right either. It's not the right word. But you know, here on the one hand, and this isn't. I, I know a few. I put a tweet up about this because he was always very good to me, Total Biscuit, and a few people 
talked about some of the things that he'd said or some of the controversies he'd got involved in. I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm just here to talk about a man that went out of his way on more than one occasion to help me out with my YouTube stuff. And I always appreciated that massively, still do to this day. My point being, though, he was still a 33-year-old man with a, with a family, which I can't even imagine what that can be like for the family. And as we are here, you know, all my thoughts and feelings do go out to them. And on the other hand, you have a 95-year-old man, and yet they both kind of hit you not necessarily in the same way because there's a lot more uh, context that comes along when someone passes away young. Like they always say that, you know, the, the worst thing that can happen to a parent is to outlive their children. I can imagine that's 100% true. I mean, how you even process that, I don't know. And yet it's still that finality. It's still that, I don't mean to be morbid, but what's more morbid than this really is you're not going to see them again and they're not around. Um, and this does tie into, you know, to spirituality and religion too. Um, we are going to do one on religion eventually. I'm, I'm, over, I'm not ashamed of course I'm proud to say that I am Jewish and I have a spiritual side and you know I believe in I believe in all of that stuff um and I, I do think that and if you don't that's cool and if you do that's cool I'm not here to preach or anything like that I totally believe in you know you've got your own opinions and you've come to those own opinions through your own life experiences and that's how you need to process the world it's not for me to say or anybody else to say otherwise but you still have the like I say it's still that shifting process or that uh, rethinking process uh, that you have to go through where it's all of a sudden like, well, you're not going to see that person and you can't call them and, you know, all, all, all of these things. And I think, again, it's not something we can think about every day because I think it would be too much. I don't think we'd be very happy. But it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it was just, it's just an it's intense thing when you sit down, uh, you sit down and think about it. And this one was kind of doubly poignant because it was, he was the last one. <laughs> he was the last surviving grandparent. And then you're like, wow, they've all, they've all, they've all, they've all been taken out. And there's something powerful in that, in one sense. I mean, the, the literal, you know, we're powerful, not like in a, in a, in a sort of uh, power. Uh, there's a somber thing about it. There's a melancholy thing about it. Um, you know, I'm in this period now between when it happened and the funeral, which is always a very strange period because you can't just do get on as normal because you have to. That's what life's all about, right? Dusting yourself off and carrying on. And I don't mean that in the way it sounds like you should always find time to grieve and be sad and to cry and to show your emotions. That's what all these series are about. However, you still have to pick yourself up eventually and carry on. And then I know when that does go down, it will probably all come back to me, which is another strange sort of set of emotions to go through. And then, you know, before long, I don't necessarily think you ever get over this stuff, but you do find ways to create a new normality. And so I complete, my point being with all of this is I completely understand why such a event can then trigger mental health, anxiety, sadness, depression, whatever, because it is like it rocks your foundations. And I get it, that sounds selfish, right? What is it done to do with me? Is this, there other people around, is, you know, him himself? But things sometimes affect us in ways that, you know, that we're not see, that, that, that we don't see coming, which is my point. That's why I wanted to bring it up here, because, you know, I think it's OK to go through those things when it does happen. And it, to be honest, it's probably the most normal thing in the world. And as always, we always say on these things, there's too much bravado, too much in terms of men anyway, masculinity about being, oh, you know, stiff upper lip. What a stupid phrase, stiff upper lip. I don't agree with that at all. I think we all have feelings. We're all human beings. We're all just like chemicals or whatever. Well, not chemicals. You know, you know what I mean? Wandering around and going off on a tangent. And yeah, it was just one of those things. I was like, do I talk about this? I think you, I think you have to. Because there's one thing we're all going to experience. It's family members passing away at some stage, which is a horrible thing to say, but it's true. Uh, and I'm happy to start that conversation as hard as it is to talk about. I'm not ashamed to say that I loved all my grandparents. And that, you know, every time one did pass away, it was, well, in one sense, it's not easier, but you, you, you learn to deal with it better because you have the experience and life is all about experiences. But it's also that thing of like, when you go, okay, well, that's that. Uh, one day I'm going to die. So now I've got to deal with that. <laughs> Again, that sounds selfish, but that's why we think. That's how people think. Um, and there's other stuff that comes along with that as well. So I thought, I thought we'd bring it up. Um, there's not really much more to say than that. Um, this is more about to start a conversation this time as opposed to kind of come up with a... A, a plan or a you know you know what I'm saying some kind of oh we should do this not that it is there either but this one I think especially is it's interesting it's interesting so yes um, I will dedicate this one to my granddad because why not uh, I'm not trying to be too sort of overly emotional or anything but you know I think that's a nice thing to do I don't think he ever watched my videos but nor did he have to you know he was a 95 year old man probably didn't know what YouTube was but he would have been proud he would have been proud I know that he's a very good person he was uh he always cared about what I was up to. Always wanted to know I was doing all right. You know, he was a good person. Anyway, leave a comment below. Uh, we'll start the conversation. Like, share, subscribe. Um, that's it, really. We'll end it there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being good people. And yeah, you know, just be positive. Put a smile on your face. 
makes the world a lot easier. And take care of yourself. My name is Simon Miller, and I'll chat to you soon.